hello and welcome how are you guys hope you are doing well today first I would like to show you some pictures what are these pictures of yes these pictures are of facial palsy Bell's palsy is the commonest cause of facial palsy but now Let's have a look at these pictures. This patient has facial palsy, but in addition, you can see that there is a vesicular eruption at the concha and facial region. And this type of facial palsy is called Herpes joster oticus or Ramsey Hunt syndrome. As I have already mentioned that uh, facial palsy with vesicular eruption at concha, external auditory canal, pina, facial region is called herpes joster oticus or Ramsey Hunt syndrome. It is caused by a virus called varicella joster virus. This virus remains dormant in the central nervous system most commonly in the dorsal root ganglia and the virus becomes activated in various conditions like immunocompromisation. So what are the clinical features? Deep burning auricular pain is often the first symptom. After one to four days the patient develops vesicular eruption over the concha, pina, external auditory canal, less commonly over the face, neck, trunk and fauces. A lower motor neuron type of ipsilateral facial palsy is seen. Sensory neural hearing loss, tinnitus, vertigo can also be present if 8th cranial nerve is involved. 8th cranial nerve may also be involved because it lies in close association with the facial nerve during its course. About 25% of children and 50% of adults suffering from herpes joster oticus develops sensory neural hearing loss. The diagnosis is usually clinical but it can be confirmed by rising titer of antibody against the varicella joster virus. But there are some variation of presentation of herpes joster oticus that we should keep in mind. Number one is in about 3% of cases the facial palsy is present without any external vesicular eruption over the external auditory canal region. This variety is called Joster sine herpeti. Number two, in about 14% of cases, the vesicular eruption is not initially present. The patient presents with facial palsy at the first. Then, after some days, he develops vesicular eruption. But when he comes to the physician, he comes with facial palsy only. So the diagnosis can be missed. And number three, in some cases, the vesicular rash or eruption may be present over the tongue or pharyngeal mucosa and not over the region of external auditory canal or face. The patient of herpes joster oticus is treated with combination of steroid and antiviral agent. Early initiation of treatment is very much important to reduce the chance of post herpetic neuralgia. Prednisolone 1 mg per kg body weight is given for 5 days with a 10 days tapering dose. Antiviral acyclovir 800 mg orally 5 times a day can also be given and injectable acyclovir 250 mg 3 times a day can also be considered. So what is the prognosis of herpes joster oticus? Unfortunately, the herpes joster oticus is prognostically worse than the Bell's palsy. Number one, if the palsy is complete, then 10% of patients will return to normal facial nerve function. And if the palsy is incomplete, then 66% of patients will return to normal facial nerve function. In untreated patient, 60% patients develop complete facial nerve palsy and the risk is higher in patient over the age of 50 years. Overall approximately 50% of adults and 80% of children 
will return to normal facial nerve function that is house Brackman grade 1 facial nerve function but there may be some kind of synkinesis. So this is all from Herpes Just Aoticus. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. See you later another day.